Hello everyone and welcome back to Gradient Descent. What we have learned so far is that we can use gradients to update our weights in order to iteratively reduce our loss function value. And so what you can see here in yellow slash green is that wi plus one is wi minus eta times the gradient, right? So it looks a little bit messy because I tried to separate here the step size, which is the eta, also known as the learning rate in machine learning, from minus the gradient, because this is what we identified in our previous video as the steepest descent direction. And we're going opposite the uphill direction. The gradient always points uphill. The negative gradient, yeah, as a consequence, points downhill, so it's the steepest direction we can take. And what we also saw is, well, picking the learning rate or step size is not an easy task to do, and this is what this video is going to be all about. So the question that I want to address now is how to pick the step size, really. And so I've drawn here a very, very simple setting where we start at some place W0. Again, I'm using um, a 1D um, iteration process. And we will begin here and then well, have a look at a little bit of the variations between learning rates that one can have. So the first thing one can do is um, basically you could think, OK, let's take the gradient and let's just normalize it to 1. Is this a good idea, yes or no? So what you could say is take V to be the gradient or minus the gradient of L normalized to one. So what we have to do is we have to take the norm, so divide by the length basically. So we have a, a constant step length and then the learning rate is everything that we need to define how far we move. I will, well, I will get back to this in a minute. Um, so let's try to pick a small step size. All right, so let's say we are cautious. We start here, we go like this. We end up here. We take a next step, we go like this, and we end up here. And you see already where this leads me. It gives me a good way of approaching the minimum. but I also have to invest quite a few steps. And we will also get back to the question, what do we do if this gradient evaluation is expensive? And in particular in deep learning or neural networks, we will see that evaluating this gradient is really expensive. So a small eta is maybe not such a favorable situation. Still, well, why not, right? It gives you a solution, but what you could also do is you could try to go and take larger step sizes. So let's make eta very large. Um, and so take a dashed line maybe. This one is going to go like here. This is eta very large. And then you see that we basically overshoot, okay? So then maybe we overshoot again. And interestingly, what can even happen is that we overshoot by so much that this does not even lead to a minimum. So it might be that we end up in a situation where we are going back and forth. So a lot more efficient if you consider, you know, how much, how large steps we take in terms of, you know, wi plus one versus wi. But we have to be careful not to, um, you know, to be overly ambitious in order to, to have an issue with convergence. What can also happen is, let's say I take a larger step even, that I go here. And so you see my loss function even increases. So the steepest descent direction guarantees me a descent, but obviously only locally, right? Here around this point, I am guaranteed to decrease. If I overstep my, my, my model, let's say this is a linear direction I'm looking into, I might even go uphill in the end. So I'm going downhill, but then if I take it too far, I'm hurting myself. So you see actually there is different things you can do. Small step sizes are a problem, large step sizes are a problem. And so one thing one can, one can ask is, um, can we also use adaptive step sizes? So, and I'm now going to introduce a new initial condition, not because I have to, because I don't want to become this overly messy. And let's say I, I take now large step size in the beginning. And then I'm taking smaller and smaller step sizes. So this seems to be 
So the eta would be adaptive, and this seems to be a, a good trade-off between you know, taking large steps in the beginning maybe when you're far away and then becoming smaller and smaller. And so this is really sort of an art in machine learning how to do this. Um, there's particular step sizes or step size mechanisms to choose this adaptivity rule. Um, and this is something we're going to discuss a little bit in the future. For now, um, these are the things we're going to try out in, in a Julia code in a, in a second. Um, before we do so, let's note down, take down some notes on a few observations. So I started with this argument, let's normalize the gradient to one. Is this really a good idea? If you think about this, I said, okay, taking large steps in the beginning seems reasonable and then maybe becoming smaller in the end um, seems like a good strategy. And so what you look, if you look at this, then you see that the gradient is rather steep here. And in later stages, the gradient will become less steep. So the gradient itself is already sort of a scaling mechanism, right? It's close to the, usually this is what we find, closer to the minimum, this gradient tends to become uh, smaller in, in norm. And so let's strike this out because it's actually not a good idea to normalize this. The gradient does already give us some sort of, of scaling property, right? And so the gradient of the loss function usually decreases in norm, so let's say in this way, as we approach the optimum. Okay, so not such a good idea. And then what you can do is, as I said, for this adaptivity, um, there's different things, but one thing that is very helpful and that is often used is what is called an Armeo line search. So what does it mean? Amio is uh, the researcher to which this, this idea dates back basically and line search means uh, once I've set my gradient, I have a direction in which I'm already moving, right? I've, I've set my direction, the gradient is fixed and now I'm just asking myself, okay, how far should I go into the direction of the gradient? So what I can do is and this is called the Armeo condition that has to be satisfied in order to have a sufficient decrease, but we will uh, discuss this a little later. So we start with some eta zero, and then we say uh, in a simple while loop, so while the loss of wi minus eta times the gradient of a at wi is greater than L of wi minus epsilon, some threshold, we do some reduction. Eta is updated by some alpha times eta, where alpha is a number between zero and one. So what we see here is that this line side, we start with a long step size, maybe like this, maybe even longer. And then we have this condition. If the loss function value at my updated point, right, wi plus one minus eta times uh, the gradient, so precisely this step rule, as long as this one does not give me a sufficient decrease, right? So it has to be uh, smaller than the actual loss function value minus some epsilon, which means if I look at this picture again, I would decrease my loss function value starting here by a threshold. Epsilon, I would say everything above this threshold is not allowed. And so if I'm taking a too long step size, which is taking me uphill, I would say, okay, the new update, this one here, is larger than the actual iterate minus the epsilon. And so I'm reducing my step length. Let's say alpha is 0 0.5 oftentimes, which means I, I, I reduce my step size by a factor of two, and then I'm not going here, but I'm going here. And then you will see that actually this condition is not violated 
and I can have a sufficient decrease. Okay, so before we discuss more details in the next videos of how to implement this and maybe what also are the, the backsides of, of using these line search methods, let's have a look at some Julia code and see well, whether we can, we can make something out of it and, and, and learn a little bit more about the step sizes. Okay, so this is where we basically stopped um, in the, excuse me, in the, the video before we had gradient descent. This was the, 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 the cyan line, the dashed line, and we compared it versus the, the least square solution that because it was a linear model, we're trying to fit a polynomial to these 10 dots. Um, it's, it can be solved in closed form, but here we didn't. We used gradient descent to get the cyan line. And we saw even after 1,000 iterations, it did not give us a, a perfect solution. It did not yet lead, uh, leave us with the optimum. So you can consider this eta to be very small. We're going down here, but apparently not quickly enough. But this is what we observed. The loss function decreases, but even after 1,000 iterations, we are not at a plateau. So apparently we could further decrease the loss function by moving on even further. Okay. So here now, this is what we saw, the iterates, we, we are moving towards the, the, the correct solution, the optimum, but it takes us a very long time. And so what we can consider now is, um, well, this was the loss function value, and you see the same thing. The loss function does not decrease until the minimum. We are still at a point where we could have a descent. And so now let's consider um, different stopping criteria to first see, okay, Apparently, I have not used the stopping criterion here. What I have done is I have only used a lot of iterations. So we introduced this in, in the last video where we said, okay, what you can have also is a stopping criterion. The gradient should be approximately zero. So, so let's look at this one. I even have two criterion here. Criteria, um, the gradient is less than some epsilon, so the absolute value of this, or the update is very small meaning even though the gradient does not satisfy a particular threshold, maybe the, the improvement is so little that I'm not willing to pay any longer. And so what I'm seeing here now is basically the same routine that we had before, just uh, with two additional uh, conditions. Okay, so I'm doing ridiculously many iterations here. Um, and then what I'm doing is I'm calculating here the gradient. And I have my two conditions. This one is the first one. If the norm of the gradient is smaller than this epsilon coefficient that I defined. Let me scroll up a bit. I defined it to be 10 to the minus five. Also the update in the loss function value, I defined it to be 10 to the minus five. So if the norm of the gradient is less than 10 to the five, I'm going to stop with this break command. And then I'm going to print what, how many iterations it took me. If not, then I'm going to do the gradient descent update, the steepest descent like here in the formula. Um, and if I have done the update, I can also check for the second condition. So if the previous iteration minus the actual iteration, so the, the difference between the two is too small, smaller than epsilon L, which is also 10 to the minus five, then I'm going to stop here with this criterion. And so then I can run it. And this is after I ran it, this is what I had. So the st first stopping criterion hit. So after 10,000 iterations, I had a norm of the gradient, which is smaller than 10 to the minus five. So sufficiently small for my taste here. And then I'm comparing this to, to the true solution. Or what I can compare is this is the difference to the pseudo inverse solution. You see that the weights, the exact weights, and uh, with the stopping criterion, the obtained weights is 10 to the minus five. So basically, well, we have the exact solution up to numerical precision. I could you know, take this further, but then you require even more iterations. So you see here that we actually do find the solution, but it took us an awful long time. And so what we're now doing is we're comparing this to different learning rates. So all I'm doing here is I have this, this eta all array, which takes me from 10 to the minus six until 10 to the minus one. And I'm going to run a loop over multiple trainings to see how the, this changes with the learning rate. Okay, so let's look at this. So what I'm doing is for eta and eta all, this is just a loop over all these. And then inside the loop, I have the same training as before. I'm running it for a thousand iterations just to see how the progress is um, and then compare. So what I'm doing is I'm updating the, the weights here um, with the steepest descent direction into the current eta. And then I'm reporting the loss function in, in such a plot. And within this loop, I'm, I'm already plotting what, what comes out. And 
what I'm doing as a final experiment is not the Amio step rule because you have to pay for it because you need in this while loop have function evaluations every time. We can consider this um, in the near future, but for now I'm just uh, using a fixed rule. And what I'm going to use is I'm going to say I'm starting with five times 10 to the minus three. And in every iteration, I'm multiplying this by 0.99. So I'm basically reducing it by a small, a very small fraction. And this means I'm, well, I'm shrinking it constantly. And this is a very coarse idea of this criterion here. And so now I'm going to compare all of these against one another. The fixed step sizes and this iterative procedure. And so this is what we find. Um, actually, what you see is that the small one, 10 to the minus six, is something that we have here, right? So we have decreased, if you look at it very carefully, but it takes an awful long time, obviously. And so with increasing learning rates, we have a better performance. So over the iterations, you see this goes until a thousand here, um, we do have an improvement. However, if we take too large of a learning rate, so this is 10 to the minus three, this works nicely. If you look very carefully here in the beginning, if I take 10 to the minus two or even 10 to the minus one, this blows up. And I cut the y-axis because this quickly explodes. So we are in this situation where you even have an increase and this just you know, becomes an instable system and will blow up in the end. So the gradient becomes larger every time, so the steps become larger every time and so on. So this is not very helpful. And now here you see this adaptive step size. So in the beginning, I have picked obviously a, a too large step size because I'm increasing my loss function, but this is um, rescued by this 0.99 multiplication. So you see every time I do one step, I reduce my step length. And so this one luckily you know, heads back after a while, so you can see the dashed line here, and then it goes down, and this one seems to converge rather quickly only in the end, the step size becomes too small and we don't find a good improvement anymore. So you see already here, you know, even so these fixed schedules are not particularly helpful. Um, the reason why I used it instead of this Amir rule is that in machine learning, you will usually see schedules like this. And we will talk about this in more detail in the upcoming videos. But for now, I hope you have a good feeling that selecting the step size is challenging and it's also really important for, for having a, a, an efficient algorithm. Thank you.